So, let's talk about the future of libertarianism. There is a libertarian wing of the Republican Party that's growing. There's also, separately, a libertarian party. The Libertarian Party in the United States is the most successful third party. They actually do win some local elections sometimes. I don't know of them ever winning a national election, even for a House of Representatives seat. Now, there are certainly House reps and senators who perhaps hold to the Libertarian ideology, but they tend to be tied to the Republican Party. The Libertarian wing is probably the near future of the Republican Party. The Republican Party can move in three directions right now. One direction is to cling to the Bush-era neoconservatism. Much of the base of the party would like that, but that will be the death of them. Bush-style neoconservatism is as stale as two-week-old French bread and nobody wants to eat two-week-old French bread. Another choice is they could start appeasing. They could start giving in to the Democrats. The Republicans have done that before. I guess they did that in the 50s. Their strategy was to not be the polar opposite of the Democrats, but to give in to them on a lot of issues. If the Republicans choose that route, what's likely to happen is that they will be a stable, loyal opposition to the Democratic Party, but they won't really be all that formidable. It won't be the death of them, but they can't expect to run the country anytime soon. The third option, however, is libertarianism. Many young conservatives, self-identified conservatives, well, when I talk to them, they're more libertarian than they are conservative. As a college professor, I certainly get many such students in my classes. Most young people who are right of center tend to have libertarian views. They really aren't that concerned about gay marriage, they don't typically support the war on drugs, and they don't typically believe that our military should be policing the world. They do, however, believe in personal responsibility, individual liberty, and adhering to the U.S. Constitution. Libertarianism can breathe new life into the Republican Party, but only if the Republican Party establishment allows it to. I'm predicting that it will in time. It's showing some signs of that as we speak. Um, the Republican Party establishment is at least welcoming Rand Paul into the fold. Now, some of the purest libertarians will say Rand Paul is not a libertarian because he endorsed Mitt Romney. Well, sometimes you got to give a little to get a little. It's called conformity cost. Rand Paul gave in a little bit by endorsing Romney, but Mitt Romney's not a libertarian, and I don't think Rand Paul would claim that Romney's a libertarian. The whole point is, for Rand Paul to be respectable within the Republican Party, he had to accept the results of the Republican nomination process, and he did. Rand Paul is definitely going to be a front-runner for the presidential nominee in 2016. And in 2012, his father, Ron Paul, get this, of all the Republican candidates, he polled the best against Obama. He was most likely to beat Obama. The problem is, he couldn't get the Republican base behind him. But Rand Paul just might be able to. And part of the reason is because the Republican base is old and dying, and they are not being replaced by young people. Instead, young people are embracing the libertarian ideology, and many of them are registering Republican. Now, I don't know for sure, but I would bet most likely that in about 10, 15 years, the Republican Party will have a very strong libertarian flavor. Well, thanks for tuning into my channel. I do plan soon to make a video on fascism, because that's a very misunderstood concept, and there are a few others I want to address in this little series on isms. Thank you all for tuning in, and I hope you'll continue to follow me.